Welcome back to Felicity Was Here. I'm Heather. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dr. Joe. And today we are discussing Felicity Season 1, Episode 13, Todd Mulcahy, Part 1. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. How's everyone doing? Good. <laughs> doing well. Doing well. For uh, behind the scenes, we're filming this kind of the first week of January. I still have my Christmas decorations up. I don't know about you. No, they're down. You know, mine never come down because they never go up, so they're just always there. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, mine are still up, and they will be. Oh, I've got my Valentine's Day decks up. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> the hearts and my heart heart garland and blankets and all this cute stuff. I'm Aww. ready. I think the candy is making the switch in the stores. I think it's all pink and red candy now instead of the Christmas stuff. Oh, that's a good excuse to go get some new candy. (laughs) Well, if you couldn't tell, I'm stalling because I don't have a ton to say about this episode. (laughs) It's one of my least favorite. But who knows? Maybe we'll actually keep it under an hour this week. We'll we'll see. I I imagine we'll be able to. Why do you guys hate this episode so much? (laughs) Does it glorify stalking? Is that why you hate it? Well, I mean, we'll get into it. I just, to me, it's annoying, and it's, this one is the one that seems like filler to me. Like, I feel like they could have done something different to have her, you know, revisit her love of art than Todd Mulcahy, but yeah. I don't know. I'm hoping that my opinion will be changed after discussing with you both. Okay. Yeah, I'm curious um, where the strong feelings come from, too, because usually that means it's touching on something inside us. It's not something about what we're watching or what we're interacting with, but it's touching something in our own self that gets us a strong reaction of, like, annoyance or irritation. So if we do some inner reflection, oh, we'll no. figure out why this episode is in particular is so annoying. Or if other, you know, if viewers feel that way, too. Are you saying I'm Todd Mulcahy? <laughs> I'm saying you need to figure that out. I don't think I've stalked anyone. (laughs) Well, somebody else might have a different opinion. (laughs) Or maybe I, too, have lost my sense of, maybe I, too, have lost my sense of childhood delight or whatever it was. Yeah. Childhood wonder. Childhood wonder, whatever it is. Yeah. 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 That could be, I mean, yeah, that could be hitting that nerve, like that deeper subtext stuff. I don't think so, though, because I literally go to Disneyland almost every week. So I feel like I've got my inner child is satisfied. OK, well, we'll we'll just go along and see what happens then, I guess. <laughs> I got some notes from this one. I don't know. All right. As a reminder, last week, Felicity caught Blair cheating on Elena with one of Elena's friends from home. And Julie found out the identity of her birth mom, Carol Anderson, and was able to catch a glimpse of her, but was too scared to meet her just yet. Those are kind of the biggest plot points last week. And today, as we've discussed, Todd Mulcahy, a guy from Felicity's past, arrives at her doorstep determined to kiss her, despite her solid relationship with Noel. Julie gets an internship with her birth mother's firm. Elena officially breaks things off with Blair, and Ben's father decides to pull financial support from him. And just want to give a quick shout out that Todd Mulcahy was played by Stephen Barra. I looked him up on IMDb. He hasn't done much since the early 2000s, so... Steven, wherever you are, hope you're doing well. <laughs> so let's get into this episode. We open with Megan in her and Felicity's room. She's in the middle of piercing her own nose when a knock at the door happens. And it's another cute, floppy-haired boy looking for Felicity Porter. I will give him credit. He is very cute. He has very nice blue eyes. He's got a cute smile, cute floppy hair. So I'll, I'll give Todd that. Yeah, he's very friendly and very, yeah, I love his smile, too. Mm -hmm. And he's looking for Felicity. Megan's like, come here a sec, help me. And he's got to now hold the ice cube on her nose to numb it for her. And she proceeds to pierce her own nose, sticks that needle right in there. She's like, wow, I can't even feel it. And it's really gross. But then Noel knocks on the door, too, also looking for Felicity. And Megan says that she's got a lot better stuff to do than just keep tabs on her adorable roommate. So this mystery boy introduces himself to Noel as Todd Mulcahy. He's an old friend of Felicity's. He explains that Felicity was his first crush and vice versa. He was her first crush. Uh, Way went back when they were 12 years old. And he said that he ran into her at a supermarket in Palo Alto over Christmas. And he has come to New York to kiss her. And he's telling this to Noel, who is her current boyfriend. But Todd says they never kissed when they were kids. And he just needs to know what it feels like. And Megan is giggling because, you know, he doesn't know that Noel is Felicity's 
boyfriend. And so she's like, look, I think you'd make the perfect couple. Todd says, thanks. But Megan says, no, I meant you two. And then we get the typical Felicity intro. So very funny. See? You know, we'll find out now a little bit more about See, Todd. this whole episode is hilarious. That's why it's good. So you're like a really big fan. Like you really, really like this one? Because I thought both of you didn't like it. I wouldn't say it's like one of my favorites. I'm just saying it made me laugh. Like, <laughs> what's wrong with that? No, I like the, I like the humor. Okay. Obviously, Ben had a few funny moments that I was a fan of, too. Mm-hmm. That's one of the big reasons that I laughed so much. There's a lot of good Ben <laughs> humor in this one. Yes. All right, continue. All right. So Felicity asks Sally in her tape if she's ever wanted something so bad that she does super superstitious stuff just for good luck. And Felicity explains that there's this professor, Dr. Peter McGrath, who has this seminar. And he is a very big deal. If you get into this seminar, you're basically going to get published. And then you'll also, if you get published, you'll basically get to be accepted in any med school in the country of your choice. She says that 200 people apply every year, but only 10 get accepted. And so we see Felicity and Elena in McGrath's lecture hall. McGrath is played by Chris Sarandon. And most people know him as, I think it's Prince Humperdinck from Princess Bride. I know him mostly as the voice of Jack Skellington, the speaking voice, not the singing voice. I was never, I don't know why, but I like missed the boat on Princess Bride when I was younger. And so I didn't see it until I was maybe in high school. And at that point, I just, like, it was cute, but I wasn't obsessed with it. Are you, do you both know that movie really well? I think it's a great movie. I watched it when I was a kid. Yeah. I'm not obsessed with it, but it's a really good movie. I like The Princess Bride a lot. That's like way up there. Yeah. I'll have to revisit it. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's a good one. And I, I know, like, I remember going around the classroom one time, like, icebreaker thing, like, what's your favorite movie? And, like, 10 people, their favorite movie was The Princess Bride. Because it's got a little bit of everything. It's got, like, romance and comedy and adventure and all this stuff. So, yeah, it makes sense. A, no, a lot of people love it. It's a, it is a classic. I just, for some reason, mm. I missed the boat on it when I was a kid. And Chris Sarandon was also married to Susan Sarandon. It was his first wife, which is funny because I was always under the impression that they were brother and sister because she still has his last name, too. So I always thought they were brother and sister. And she was with Tim Robbins for like forever. So I just never Mm -hmm. thought she was married before. So that was funny to when I was doing my IMDb research. I was like, oh. They actually were married. We got hoodwinked. That was a hoodwink of all time because I was also under that impression. There's zero resemblance. <laughs> it's a cool last name. Like it goes, it's a good name for her. So no wonder she kept yeah, it. It has a nice ring to it. That's true. Mm-hmm. And Humperdinck was the villain, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And Jack Skellington, he's not a villain. There's a dark side to him. He's like an anti hero, I guess. So there's some. Villainous vibes, though, here already from Dr. Mm. McGrath here, but we shall see. So then Felicity says that her dad, in a very Dr. Porter way, says that getting into McGrath's seminar is monumentally important to her career as a doctor. Then we see that Felicity is, I think, studying and Noel approaches her just with the words, Todd Mulcahy. And she says, wait, what? How do you know Todd Mulcahy? And he says that he just met him in her room. And he had left a nerdy little note for her to meet him at his hotel. And Noel says, well, he said he came here to kiss you. And Felicity's pretty much in disbelief at that. But she's also panicking about her exam for McGrath's seminar. She says that What's even scarier is that if she does do well on this test, then she has to do a one-on-one interview with him. And so she's freaking out about that, too. She's like, I don't have time to worry about Todd Mulcahy right now. But she gets on the payphone to call him at his hotel. And Noel actually brings up a great suggestion that she should speak with someone who's already been in McGrath's class, which, yeah, I think that's actually good advice for once instead of him telling her not to talk to people or make up lies. So, yeah. (laughs) I appreciated that. That was good problem solving. As Felicity calls Todd from the payphone, Richard then comes up to Noel, Richard, always Richard, and asks Noel if he sent in his request form for a satellite dish. And Noel says, "Uh, I did, but they said, like I told you, it's not allowed. And Richard's like, I don't really care what's allowed or what's not allowed. Like, you two are fraternizing. And he's like, so I'm just going to install the satellite dish anyway. So Richard's going to Richard. Then we see at the loft, Sean is eating a lot of something in a big mixing bowl, something he's working on. And Ben comes into the kitchen and he tries to get Ben to try some of it. 
He does, but then Ben spits it out and he says, whatever that is, don't pursue it. (laughs) It's bad. (laughs) Apparently it's cereal, but that was very funny. (laughs) That made me LOL. I really did laugh out loud. See, every Ben moment made me laugh this episode. He's so cute. He's so funny. He's very funny in this (laughs) one. And there's more Sean and maybe that's why Mm, they get to like play off of each other more. So then Ben sees that there's a paper on his coffee table and so he's reading it and then Julie gets out of the shower and he asks her if she's applying for the internship at the architecture firm where her birth mom works without talking to her first. So that form was the internship application. And Julie says that she's thinking about it. But Ben snaps back that that's incredibly stupid. Julie says it's a chance to get to know her mom a bit. But Ben replies, like, fine, whatever, go ahead and do it. Like, you want to do something stupid, go ahead and do it. And Julie's like, God, thanks for your permission. And starts to storm off. But Ben realizes that he was being a dick. A dick. (laughs) And so he gets up. He's like, wait, wait, wait. Don't listen to me. I'm just pissed off and it has nothing to do with you. Ben explains to her that his dad called and said that he's going to cut him off, that he doesn't want to support Ben financially anymore. And so he's coming from this obviously hurt place with his own parents. So he tells Julie that he just doesn't want to see her get hurt and he apologizes. Uh So I'm very happy that he realized right away Uh, that he was being an ass and apologized. Because I was like, excuse me, when he first snapped at her, I'm like, oh, what are you doing, man? But then he caught it so fast and immediately apologized and took ownership of it. I was like, okay, we're okay. Because I was a little bit like, "Uh uh-oh. That's because he's he's so emotionally mature. (laughs) He doesn't realize it right away. He is. Not the first label I'd put on him, but he was so (laughs) supportive. But he wasn't. He was so supportive of her and like so mature the last couple episodes when she was like thinking about contacting her. And so like, yeah, when he did say that, that's stupid. I was like, oh, Ben. But then right away, of course, he's like, no, sorry, I'm dealing with my own issues, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not about you. It's my own stupid stuff. Yeah. So that was awesome. Growth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, I have to put one more thing in here about this, which comes up later again. Julie is trying to think about applying to this internship for her her mom's work, where she's like an architect, right? How is Julie getting this internship at this prestigious architecture firm when she's a music major? Just saying, there's no way. Yeah, I wondered that too, but um, we got to move the plot along. So <laughs> through the miracle of uh, of writing, she gets the yeah. internship position. Whatever. To be fair, it looks like the job is just fetching people lunch, probably, and coffee and, like, making copies. So I don't know. But like, still, I know. I just, it doesn't. It still would be somebody from that world who should you get would the think, position. Yes. yes. You kind of start at the bottom. Unless yeah. there's multiple positions. But it sounded like there was only one, so I don't know. Unless no one else applied. I don't know. Moving along. <laughs> So then in the mailroom, Blair approaches Elena, saying that he's left her a bunch of messages. And Elena can't even look at him. And she just says, you don't want to talk to me right now. And yet Blair does not leave her alone. He's like, like, oh, you want to go get some? And she's like, walk away. (laughs) And she's warning him again, like, walk away. And Blair has the nerve to say, what now (laughs) and elena swings around and she just slaps the crap out of him he like falls to the floor i mean yeah she warned him but it's a little a little violent yeah i feel like she hit him so hard like did they need a stunt double for that move like he flew across the room or like across the hall anyway for real like fell into a trash can and like it was crazy and yeah she tells him that she saw him with her with tara and she says, stay away from me and walks away. So cat's out of the bag. That surprised me. It surprised me a little bit, though, that she hadn't already called him and been like, mm. go to hell, you know, stay away from me. Like, we're done. Instead of just ignoring, because that seems like a not Elena thing to do. That seemed very passive yeah. and just waiting for him, you know, keep calling, keep calling, keep calling, show up in your face and then slap his face. Like, that seems kind of not Elena. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that she didn't, they didn't show her in that previous episode, like coming up to him at the jazz club, like right away and just like slugging him there. Yeah, if she was going to do it, (laughs) but she was crying quite a bit. So she probably had to digest that a little bit. Yeah, that's true. It was about her and Felicity. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like that it was more about her friendship. Yeah. 
But yes, I agree. It's weird that she has waited this long. Right. Because if he's called, left that many messages, it's obviously been a couple of days. It's not like just, oh, last night they went to the jazz mm-hmm. club. So then Felicity is studying for the McGrath test at work at Dina DeLuca when Javier comes up to her and asks her if he looks thinner. He's like, no, really look like and he turns around in all different directions. Uh, But instead of checking out Javier, Todd Mulcahy appears and Felicity sees him. So she wants to take her break now. And Javier's like, oh, okay, so I'm fat. Great. She's like, oh, you look great, but my friend's here. So she gets to take her break. So Felicity goes up to Todd and gives him a hug and gets to sit down with him at Dean and DeLuca. And that's where he tells her that he's come to kiss her. Then explains that they had an intense thing going on in summer school and almost kissed when they were 12. Like this, they were young. This was, this was a long, long time ago. Although I guess if you're 18, so maybe it was only six yeah. years ago. But still, 12, like your kids. And so he says... You know, what happens when you meet your soulmate when you're a kid? Like, you know, then you just, what, go the rest of your life not being with your soulmate just because you met them when you were a kid? I don't know if I buy that argument. But she explains that she's dating Noel, the RA. He's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, he seems great. But he wants to disregard logic and take a huge romantic risk. And Felicity (laughs) responds that she's done that and it doesn't always turn out like you expect. So I feel like, they already do like the the wink wink mm-hmm. to the cre- like, OK, she gets that she's done this before. She's not really one to talk or get pissed about this behavior from Todd. So I feel like they've established that early on. So I think that's why I get so annoyed is because it's like we're just continuing to beat the dead horse throughout the whole episode that like he won't stop, won't stop. He's stalking her. I don't know. So I start to get annoyed. I'm like, OK, we've made the joke. Like, let's move mm-hmm. on. But anyway. I think the difference is, though, that they had a real they did have a real connection. Like he didn't just hold a bag of her blood one time and just kind of like stare at her for four years straight. Like they it seemed like they they had a genuine connection and some moments together and really related to each other at that time. So it does feel deeper than her situation with Ben. For sure. Yeah, they were actually friends. But on the flip side of that, she while she did do this crazy thing to Ben, she didn't like come up to Ben and be like, I want to be with you. We're going to be let's be together. Like, yeah, he's very persistent. Yeah, <laughs> I want to be with you. <laughs> yeah, she played it a little bit more cool than that. He was very direct. But again, she's not very direct. Yeah. So <laughs> he's very direct. And he's just like, look, this is what's up. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. Let's make this happen. So he got he got straight to business. I appreciate that being very honest he's not being like shady and slinking in the background being like oh i didn't know you go here (laughs) totally forgot you're going here yeah but yeah i just i think it's great that they that felicity acknowledges that she's done the similar thing she's disregarded logic she's taken a huge romantic risk but unfortunately yeah it doesn't turn out like you would expect but todd says hey you should get back to work she's like okay yeah like have a good trip back home but he says nope he's gonna get that kiss and he's gonna call her so oh, he's got confidence, I guess. I don't know. What do you think he would have done? Do you think he would have um, just been like, okay, here, let's let's just have a quick kiss, just like a little peck on the lips and just like, okay, we're done. We found out. Do you think he would just like do that just to make him go away? Or would you be like, no, I've got a boyfriend. Get out of here. I think at that point I wouldn't have been nice anymore. And I've been like, you're really creeping me out. Please leave or I will call the police. <laughs> Well, I wonder why she wasn't that creeped out. She seemed more stressed out by it. So I wonder what that means. Because she didn't seem like... I think like she doesn't know yet all the things he is going to do. So right now it's just like, hey, I came to kiss you. And he's like, no, I'm going to get that kiss. I'll call you later. I don't know if she would have maybe taken everything seriously yet at that point. But obviously it gets a lot worse. But yeah, I don't think I would have been like, oh, sure, let's get it out of the way. Like, Noel would definitely be hurt, I feel like. (laughs) I would would just, like, kiss him and be like, see, there's nothing there. Bye. (laughs) But what if he's like, oh, yeah, that was the best kiss of my life. Then what? Yeah, what if that just made him even crazier? Well, she could definitively at that point say, like, I don't feel the same way. And he'd be like, "Okay, now we both know. Now I'm going to leave. If you think he would accept that answer, maybe. I think he would. I think he would because he I think he was posing this as also a mystery to her, not just a mystery to him. I don't think any of this is like normal. okay stuff. I'm just like, you know, playing along with it just for the sake of it. I know. Okay, Got (laughs) to talk about something today. So (laughs) listeners, what would you do? (laughs) Would you kiss him or just or call the police? (laughs) Let us know. Join our discord. Shoot us an email. Then Felicity and Elena are sitting down with that former student of Dr. McGrath's per Noel's recommendation. 
And the student, the former student says that she's, you know, 24, 25, 26 years old. And she knows that one of the most profound experiences of her life is already behind her. And already I'm like, ugh, <laughs> like gagging over this. You know, Felicity and Elena are like, wow, his seminar is that good. And she says, oh, well, it's, he's not just a genius. He's so much more than his reputation. Peter, first name basis, <laughs> Peter challenges you in ways you can never predict. And Elena responds, yeah, plus he's got this whole sexy thing going Barf. on. <laughs> we only we saw him very briefly, but there was I didn't see any kind of sexy vibe. No, there is no sexy vibe. Like what? I think it's like one of those like nerd crush things, though. Like I know when I was in school, a couple of my friends and I, there was a professor that we had a professor crush on, but he wasn't like a super sexy, hot, like stereotypical hot kind of person. Like he was just so smart and so passionate about his work and so good at what he did that that was really attractive to us. So I could relate to that. Like if they were kind of like, oh, he's so you know prominent in his field and he's so smart and that's amazing to be in this genius you know, in the in the same room as this genius, I could see them kind of getting that vibe, regardless of his appearance. I, I think that that kind of goes a long way when you're passionate about a subject. Yeah, that makes sense. It, yeah, I guess I wasn't saying appearance. It felt more just like he, I don't know, he seemed very cold and intimidating. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't getting a sexy, but you're right. For some people, that's hot because like Elena's kind of cold and intimidating too, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. So that they're on the same level. Like that's, that's a. <laughs> you are correct, sir. That's a match made in heaven right there. <laughs> Is it? No. Nope. <laughs> That's a match made in jail. <laughs> well, also, she had just like come off this thing with Blair where he was like really immature and like treated her like crap. So maybe like this older man, mature man who's like got his shit together is really appealing to her at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. But yeah, student calling him by his first name, that feels very intimate. Yes, very. For a student-teacher relationship already off the bat, just that Peter challenges you. Ugh. Red flag. Boundaries, boundaries. <laughs> Immediate red flag. <laughs> but the former student, did we ever catch her name? I, I hate calling her former student. I should have looked that up. I'll look it up. You keep going. I mean, we don't talk to her, talk about her anymore. But yeah, she says to expect a tough exam and starts to give them tips on it when Felicity sees Todd in the background. He has shown up again and... Felicity goes to excuse herself and Elena kind of gives her the side eye like, what are you doing? Like, this is important. And Felicity's like, oh, it's that guy. I just have to go talk to him. So she goes up to Todd and he says, you know, I, I know it's probably a bad time, but he just wanted to drop something off for her. And it's a wrapped gift. So he tells her to open it and she opens this mini New York license plate with the name Felicity on it. And he says, hey, I remembered that growing up, you could never find one with your name on it. And so he had this one specially made for her. And that is very sweet. I will admit that. That's thoughtful. Yes. Yeah. It's it's mm -hmm. cute. Um, and she says, yeah, not only do I remember that, like, still to this day when I pass a toy store or something, like, I'm still going in and looking to see if they've na added my name. And I'm like, Felicity isn't that weird of a name, but I guess it is a little, maybe a little more old fashioned. Maybe back in yeah. the day. Maybe back then it was like, because maybe everybody named their kid Felicity after they watched this. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, there was the American Girl doll Felicity. I thought it would have been more popular. But anyway. But they've got history. <laughs> so it's it's very sweet. But she's like, look, it's really just not a good time. And not just right now, but she's got this big test that she's working on. She's got work at Dina DeLuca and she's studying or she's hanging out with Noel, her boyfriend, who she really likes a lot. And this scene in particular, I thought he had really beautiful blue eyes and a very cute smile. So I, yeah, again, I think he is really cute and kind of gives me Noel and Ben vibes, like put together a little bit because like he's kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I was getting a little of both of them. He's like a little nerdy and a little hot. I like it. Yeah. You can't get on board with that. But then also like like he's kind of like he's kind of sporty too, we learned He's kind of well-rounded. So it, it seemed like a little bit of both of them, but. So that, that student is credited as seminar student in this episode. Okay, good. I don't feel bad now. And if we do happen to see her in a future episode, her name is going to be Sabrina Briscoe, and she's played by Amy Wilson. Just if, in case. Okay, love it. Okay. So Todd looks like maybe this time he really is leaving. So they say goodbye because she's like, I've got Noel, I've got work, I don't have time. But then Felicity tells Sally that she thought that that was it. But it was not it. Later, Julie tells Felicity in the mailroom that 
Carol's office called her about the internship, that she's thinking about taking it. She's got this fantasy that her and Carol can get to know each other before she tells her that she's her daughter. So Felicity then gets this slip in the mail that says she has a package. So she goes to the front desk and picks up her package. And it's this extravagant, huge box, like probably bigger than her. It's got multiple balloons with like surprise written on it. It's obscene, basically. But Felicity and, you know, Julia, they're just kind of like, hey, well, I'm here for you. If you need anything, let me know. So they've kind of ended that conversation with this huge, extravagant box. Then we go back to the loft and Ben is doing calculations. So he goes up to Sean's room, which is literally like a loft within a loft, <laughs> goes up the stairs and like he's got this open bedroom layout. I can't remember if that's the first time we've seen his his like bed area. I, I personally would not no. like sleeping oh, no. up there. I know there's like fence type things up, but I would always just feel weird about like falling <laughs> out some for some reason. And just like hearing everyone like in the kitchen, cooking, privacy like stuff. people like, what? <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. So Ben goes up there and asks Sean if he can owe him rent for a couple of months because he's having money problems. And Sean's like, I could tell you yes, but I'm going to tell you no. And here's why. He has a mortgage that kicks his ass every month and he needs roommates to help pay for that mortgage and he hates having roommates. And then the other two guys, the other two roommates have already left. So now Ben is the only one that's helping on this mortgage payment. So Sean eventually, I guess, lets up. Ben was like, hey, if it's not OK, cool. I understand. I'm just, you know, struggling. And Sean's like, all right, I'll give you one month. At this scene, I have to ask, how did Sean buy a place? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Without having a job or any income. I don't I don't own my place, but I've looked before. I know what it takes to get a mortgage. <laughs> like, how do you not yeah, have a W two? Just and, handing them out. Yeah. Like <laughs> you need a job, you need income. I don't I don't understand how and in New York City, I don't uh -huh. know how this ever yeah, happened. Especially in New York. I don't know if you guys see these on Facebook where there's this guy who like finds people on the street in New York. It's like, How much do you pay for rent? Uh, and I view your apartment. Oh yeah, yeah. And they'll be like, I pay four thousand a month. And it'll be like a broom yes. closet. So I'm like, what? There's no way. 300 square foot <laughs> studio. <laughs> yeah. Well, things are a little bit different, I guess, in 98, 99. But still, um, how does this slug not have any kind of job at all? Like, not just like the financial standpoint, but like, how is he not doing any kind of work at all? Like, he can't even like, I mean, we would have said like, you know, do Uber or Lyft or something. Now, like, why can't he drive a taxi? <laughs> like in New York, he could make some good bank. Bike, bike messenger, yeah, bike messenger, something like you don't have to. Dean and DeLuca. Yeah, Dean and DeLuca, where all the kids are hanging out. It's like, does do new batches of college students just finance his mortgage every single year? You know, like, do they just graduate and like he gets a new batch of <laughs> kids coming in, like paying his mortgage for him? Like how, how I don't understand this, like how he can't like he doesn't work at all. I don't I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, I don't even think he would have gotten a mortgage in the first place. So I don't get how he's not just renting, but. It's it's kind of the TV trope, right? All mm -hmm. these characters always have huge, gorgeous places in New York City, which would cost a fortune, like Friends and even Full City's dorm room is way they bigger. Have jobs like on, on other TV shows, they have a job. True, true. So then we go to Carol's office where Julie has now accepted the internship, and she's getting the tour of the architecture firm from probably another admin or manager. She's giving her the tour and points out. That's Carol. And Julie asks this other employee what Carol is like. And she says that she's a doll. She's like, she gave me this necklace for my birthday. So Julie's kind of peeping on Carol now. Thoughts? Great, good idea for Julie to take this internship? Of course not. What do you think? Foolish. Foolish, Julie. I can understand why she would want to do it this way. And I can also understand why it's not a good idea to do it this way. It's just more secrets and lies type of stuff which i'm not a fan of i'm like, like super 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 not a fan of that stuff so it's kind of just kind of replaying out how she got there in the first place yeah kind of shady yeah and presumably you would get closer to her you learn more to, more about her and then build some trust and then you're gonna break that trust by saying like oh mm -hmm. i've been lying to you or not really lying but i've been omitting all of this important information by the way and also, I mean, casting, I think we mentioned in a previous episode, did such a good job. They look so much like, like, if you're actually her daughter, don't you think she'll see herself mm -hmm. in you too? Like, if you see yourself in her, wouldn't vice versa be true? So it just seems like a not great idea. Definitely not. We shall see. 
Then back at Kelvin, Noel goes to Richard's room where he is welding uh, something to his satellite dish. So more fire, more fire hazards. But, you know, the Christmas tree, that was the problem. And Noel's like, what are you doing? Richard says, don't be sanctimonious with me. Like, you've got your little illicit affair going on. And Noel's like, we covered this. Like, you can't have the satellite dish. And Richard says, well, if you report me, then basically I'm going to report you and your affair with Felicity. So Noel's like, what are you blackmailing me? He's like, call it whatever you want. I'm busy. And he continues to weld away in his room. <laughs> and I, these scenes are funny with Richard. And I know there is probably a point long term, but the last few episodes... Like, I like that Noel is comic relief, but I also feel like they could give him a little bit more character development, more than just these weird confrontations and situations with some of the other residents. Like, the sense of stuff last week was kind of a throwaway filler as well with the with the brothers and the dad and the sausages and all of that and the vending machines. And even this Richard stuff, like, it's funny, but it doesn't really feel like it's leading anywhere meaningful week after week. It's just like... He's annoyed that Richard's got this thing over him. I don't know if you all disagree, but it's it's nice comic relief. But I feel like I want still a little bit more of like Noel's background in his life. Yeah, a little more meat. Yeah. I think maybe the only thing I kind of speak to is like, how does he navigate interpersonal conflicts? How successful is he at navigating mm-hmm. interpersonal conflicts or just problems in general? That's the only development I'm seeing, but not like his background. Yeah. Or like his hopes and dreams and fears. I sound like Never Been Kissed, the movie. Ah. What are your hopes and your dreams? Um, but yeah, like I just, I would want more of that too. Like we know Elena works hard. We know that Ben really liked Trat. Like I just, I feel like we could see a little bit more of Noel too. I know there's some stuff coming, but. Likes computer stuff. <laughs> That's true. He designs t-shirts. But anyway. So then Felicity's back in her room and she's opening up the package from Todd, of course. And Noel comes in and she tells him that this box is from Todd. She's like, listen to the answering machine. And he's left so many messages, wants Felicity to call him at his hotel. Noel's like, this is a problem. And Felicity finds a letter from Todd in the box. And basically he said that this whole package is a Felicity time capsule. That's to help restore her childlike wonder that he thinks that she has lost. And in the middle of all this, Megan comes in. Her nose is rank. It's like red and swollen. And Felicity's like, ew, like what's going on with your face? And Megan says that it's infected because of Todd Mulcahy. Felicity's like, how do you know Todd Mulcahy? (laughs) Like everyone knows Todd Mulcahy that she talks to. I love that joke. Um, It's so good. Yeah. It's like, oh, Todd Mulcahy. (laughs) I don't know why I always bring up How I Met Your Mother, but there's a whole episode. I'm trying to remember the name of the character. But they're all like saying, oh, I love so-and-so. Oh, I hate so-and-so. God, I have to remember now. Come on, you're my how I met your mother person. Uh, I'm going to try to sit on that and think about it. I know what you're talking about. I'm going to, I know the actor's name. Taryn Killam. Gary Blauman. Yeah. Gary, I hate Larry. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, that was a tangent. So then Felicity says that she doesn't have time for Todd. She has essays to write. She's got the McGrath test. And she's telling Noel that she doesn't want to be cruel because, like, he's a little crazy, but he's not a monster. And again, the same could be said about Felicity. So that's funny. But she's like, all right, I need to talk to an expert on what it's (laughs) like to be stalked. (laughs) So she, of of course, she goes to bed. And I do love this so much. Like, this is funny. I 100% will support that. Before we get to their interaction, though, I will insert these behaviors yeah. that Todd Mulcahy's doing. So, like, I was kind of joking around before, like, oh, just kiss him, get over it, whatever. But these kinds of things could be described as love bombing, this over-attention and, like, the presents, the gifts yes. and all that stuff. And, like, look at all these things I got you, and I'm so thoughtful. If it was, like, a nasty, abusive kind of person, they could use that as a form of manipulation. I do think he has genuine care for her, and he genuinely was being thoughtful and not trying to like use these as ways to pressure her into kissing him i think he really did just i think he's just a little over the top kind of person but under normal circumstances much like felicity she's also over the top yeah like kind of dramatic but like this like legitimately would be you need you need to um watch your back like not interact Mm -hmm. with people who behave this way this is not healthy normal stuff viewer beware so felicity goes to the loft to talk to ben and she says that when she first came to New York, she was stalker-esque. And Ben laughs at that. But 
Felicity's like, like, you're laughing, but I'm in a similar situation now. And Ben replies, you're stalking somebody else? <laughs> oh, Ooh. my God. That made me laugh so hard because he said it so seriously. <laughs> he was very earnest. It was like he really was like, wait, who? <laughs> but Felicity says, no, I'm not stalking anyone. But she tells him about Todd, that he's convinced that they're soulmates. And Ben again replies, <laughs> imagine that. And again, like I cackled, I think, even more when he's like, like oh, imagine that, because his face was also very funny. Yeah. And Sean then comes into the kitchen to check on his cereal that he's cooking. And Ben, you know, he's like, hey, how's it going? And Ben tells Sean that Felicity has a stalker. And Sean says, <laughs> has or is? <laughs> again, hilarious. Like from start to finish, this scene yep. is definitely mm-hmm. chef's kiss. It's very funny. So Sean pulls some cereal out of the oven that he's baking, and he tells them that it's milkless cereal, that all you need to do is add water and stir it up, and then you've got your regular milk and cereal. cereal. So he asks Felicity if she wants to try it. Ben's like, no, don't do it. Like, trying to signal to her, like, no, you don't have to do this. And Felicity's like, sure, why not? I'll try it, because she's a nice person. And then Ben tells her that he will go talk to Todd for her. He's like, where is he staying? Let me know. Like, yeah, I'll deal with it. And I think this was super interesting. I'm like, oh, is Ben is here to kind of save the day Mm -hmm. again, maybe? Like, why would Ben be that overprotective over her? Like, does he think that Todd is actually dangerous? Like, I'm curious to hear both of your thoughts, like why he would offer to go talk to this guy. Yeah, because she said she didn't have time for it and he's hot and that's a hot thing to do. By the way, this whole scene is my Ben's hottest moment of the episode because he's funny and and he's caring and manly. It's just all good stuff. But I, I did think it was slightly odd that he was like, I'll just go talk to him for you. Like, I was slightly out of character, but I think they just had to set it up for the future interactions because Todd has to interact with every single person. (laughs) Everyone knows Todd Mulcahy. That's true. And like Felicity has her own boyfriend who can go talk to this guy if there's an issue. So yeah, I Mm -hmm. thought it was a little weird, but he's here to save the day. He's going to go talk to Todd for her. And so Sean gives Felicity the lactose, which is the name of this milkless cereal, and she spits it out. So yet again, no good. And he should not pursue this. Yeah. But, you know, going back to this confrontation thing, I mean, look at how effectively Noel is confronting Richard. You know, how far is he getting with that? Like, can he get the job done if he confronts somebody? Like, not all the time. So and I don't know. Obviously, Ben's probably not privy to all of that, but I could kind of see like maybe an idea that Noel's not the kind of guy who can, you know, drop the hammer and shut it down. And maybe Ben could more fill that role. We'll see how they both do. (laughs) (laughs) So Ben goes to the hotel, knocks on Todd's door. Todd opens up. At first, Ben, you know, before before Todd opens, he's like, Todd Mulcahy, I need to talk to you. Open up. Like, he's ready to be tough. And Todd opens the door. They both look at each other for a second. And then they're like, dude, what? And then they're throwing out at each other. Like, what are you doing here? And so Ben goes into the hotel room. So we don't know why yet, but apparently already know each other. Then back at Carol's office, she is on a call and Julie brings her some lunch. So she kind of sets it down on her desk. And as she's walking out, Carol gets off the call and she says, Julie, I'm Carol. Like she introduces herself and asks her if she's going to share the food with her. She's like, did you eat yet? Julie says no. So she's invited now to share a meal with Carol. So Julie pulls up a chair. They start chit-chatting. Carol asks her about college. Like, are you an architecture major? She's like, no, I'm studying music. I play guitar. And Carol says that she also used to play guitar when she was younger, that she was good at rhythm, but she can't really solo. And Julie says, oh, really? Me too. Then Julie asks her if she's happy Being an architect, she quickly finishes that sentence because it's a weird question to ask a higher up in a company, like, are you happy? So Carol explains, like, yeah, you know, the job can be a slog, though, trying to get all the deadlines done. But then she shares that she's married and has kids. She's like, I don't mean to brag, but they're two of the greatest kids on the planet. And she shows Julie a picture, which Julie looks at and kind of hands back to her. And I just think that must be a punch to the gut for Julie. So much ouch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel really bad for her. But also it's like, maybe this is why this wasn't right, a good idea. Right. You know? Yep. Ugh. Yep. But it's sad. Because now she's probably thinking you, like, maybe at first she could justify it. Like, she just doesn't want kids, right? She wants to be this high-powered career woman. 
but now she knows like she does have kids and she is mm-hmm. married so yeah that's got to be upsetting then Felicity and Elena are studying probably for the McGrath test and Felicity all of a sudden in the middle of of Elena's method with the M&Ms Felicity gets a rush of confidence she's like yeah you know we're gonna do really well on this McGrath test and she's like I'm sure this will pass but right now I'm confident and then Ben walks up and kind of crouches down next to Felicity and says that he and Todd used to party together that they used to skateboard together and they had a lot of fun he just never knew his last name but he's like, yeah, it's Mulcahy. <laughs> and Ben proceeds to say, like, hey, yeah, maybe just let him kiss you. He's a good guy. <laughs> and I mean, that's just kind of, yeah, silly. But now Ben needs a favor and asks Felicity if Dean and DeLuca needs anyone. And he needs a job, basically. So Felicity says, like, she'll talk to Javier about it. So then we go to the lecture hall. Felicity and Elena are taking their exam. Again, they're not sitting together, which I think is weird, but I get it. It's for the nice, pretty shot. But then Todd is outside of the classroom door and he starts holding up signs a la Love Actually, like, to me, you are perfect style. But he's asking Felicity while she's taking this test when they can sit down together and Felicity's like looking at McGrath she's looking at Todd like no go away I don't have time for this shaking her head no and Todd wants to do it tonight and so Felicity finally agrees but she still looks annoyed and I in this specific scene I feel like Todd is a little bit of Felicity and Noel put together like He's sweet and romantic, sending her the gifts and everything. And Noel was really good at like getting her the textbook that she needed and getting her the chocolate that she likes, but also like can't let shit go, (laughs) even though like it's not the biggest thing going on in her life right now. Like when her parents, she was struggling with her parents and he was like, oh, they don't like me. I messed up. Right. So I just I was getting some Noel and Felicity vibes in that moment. But maybe they are soulmates. See, maybe he's on to something. No, (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Does that mean (laughs) does that mean that you think Felicity and Noel are soulmates? Not even a little bit. Oh, Heather, (laughs) you're really reaching. (laughs) That was a good one, though. (laughs) You just said it. Maybe that means they are soulmates. I mean, you know. Or because they were Felicity, like they're both like (laughs) she is. (laughs) Not because of Noel. That was a good try, though. I mean, you said it, not me. You know what? Todd Todd pissed me off in this scene. He was doing too much. Like, okay, so he's trying to get her attention, whatever. He knows school is important to her. And this is, like, a super important exam. And he's, like, in the window, like, oh, no, no, what can we meet? Like, dude, she's taking this really fucking important exam. What is your problem? Yeah, like, like you are mentally unwell. <laughs> he could have just waited outside the door until it was done and just been like, hi, it's me again. And just yeah. not distracted her while she's actively taking this huge exam. Yeah. Yeah, I did not appreciate that either because it's really disrespectful of how seriously she's taking this whole exam mm-hmm. and, you know, that position she's trying to get so. That was messed up. That was definitely messed up. And if they really are soulmates, then he would have known that. And he wouldn't have to try so hard. (laughs) But again, I did see parallels, though, with her with the finally episode when she's taking her finals and Noel Mm -hmm. is like in the window like, oh, we need to talk. I mean, he had a better reason because his great uncle did die and he had to leave immediately like he couldn't wait. But the Mm -hmm. the scene, I, I again, just had some parallels there with with Noel in the past, not saying it's right in the situation. This is I agree Todd is annoying and I I'm over it (laughs) but let me go back to Dean and DeLuca and Ben is getting interviewed by Javier and he doesn't have any prior food experience but he thinks he'd be good at food service and Ben explains that he also worked in the skiing section of a sporting goods store back in Palo Alto and he's just like look do I have any chance here and Javier's like um mm, no just kidding you know I love you and I mean Javier's so cute so cute in that scene and he really does love Mm -hmm. Ben like throughout the whole series there's some value to this episode there's more Javier than we usually see I'll take it very true very true but yeah Javier loves him and he's like can you start tomorrow Ben's like tomorrow yeah sure and he's like do you have an aversion to wearing a black hat and Ben says, do I have to wear it? <laughs> and I think this will be a running joke throughout the show, right? Mm-hmm. That like he never wants to wear the hat. And I feel like it's only because he has to. Like if it was optional, yeah. he'd probably just wear it <laughs> but because he has to. But he's also got all that great. He's got all that great hair. Like why oh, cover no. that up? You no. can't cover yeah. that up. No, that's that's a shame. Yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> 
Then back in Kelvin, Noel is passing out new floor calendars and, of course, approaches Richard's room, who is hosting a huge pay-per-view fight night party, you know, full of cigars in his room. But Noel just lets it go, despite being pissed off with Richard, um, because, yeah, he's essentially blackmailing him now. I still feel like it can't be that against the rules to date an advisee, but maybe I'm wrong. I feel like dating an advisee, yeah, is way less of a offense than all the things Richard has done. Yeah, I feel like this could have all been avoided. Yeah. But anyway, he leaves Richard's and goes to Felicity's room and Todd is waiting outside Felicity's door. And Noel's like, you again, like, look, stay away from her. So he tries to confront him. But then Todd says, well, what am I supposed to do? Turn off my heart? <laughs> And I guess this is my angsty away <laughs> message of the week, but I didn't really find anything that great or angsty in this episode, mostly annoying. So it's not even that good of an away message, but that's the best I can do. So then Noel is just like, look, stop giving her presents. Just leave her alone. And Todd says, well, you know, we're supposed to have dinner tonight. And I was like, wait, so you made a plan? Like you guys are having dinner? And Todd then kind of distracts Noel and's like, oh my God, I love your shirt. And I was like, oh yeah, I designed it. But, you know, he's trying to get back on track with the confrontation. But then Todd asks, well, what program did you use? And they start to geek out on technology and Photoshop. And Noel's having some weird issue. And Todd's like, oh, I can probably help. So then, yeah, the confrontation doesn't go well with Noel. So then Julie, Ben, and Elena are all eating together. And Julie is telling them that she likes Carol, that she thought she'd be mad or like burst into tears all the time, but she actually likes Carol. And I do think it's interesting here that she doesn't mention anything about Carol's husband and kids. So I don't know if she's like still trying to have this idealized vision of like what their relationship is going to be like and then not. Yeah, like the fantasy, you know, and like have her friends believe in that fantasy, too. I don't know if you all caught on to that. Yeah, I think maybe that's something that she would maybe talk to Ben about one on one and not necessarily like out in public you know having lunch or dinner whatever they were doing with elena too like it's just kind of that could be awkward but she's probably still like processing it too because not only did she like find out you know she thought oh carol didn't want to have kids and now she does but now she's found out she's got these half siblings so that's like another big part of it yeah so she's got a she's gonna get to know her mom is she gonna get to also know her half siblings at some point like it's the layers are growing yep and Elena basically says, that's great, but you still haven't told her about you. And Julie says she has not. And Elena says something very Elena. She's like, taking this job is whack, which is a very 90s <laughs> terminology, too. And, you know, Elena's always going to be blunt. So she turns to Ben and basically asks him, why haven't you talked some sense into her about this? Like, this is crazy. And Ben's like, I'm just trying to be the supportive boyfriend. Am I being supportive? Julie's like, you're being very supportive. So everything's hunky-dory. But then Ben says, uh, Julie, we got to go. As Blair sits down next to Elena. And they skedaddle quickly. <laughs> it's so funny, though, because she's like, I'm still eating. He's like, no, we have to go. And then she sees where she's like, I'm full. So she's done it very quietly. It was like the cutest little, I'm full. And then they get a big go. That was perfect. Oh. <laughs> and Blair asks Elena for a chance to hear him out. And I guess he says that he just wanted them to work out, that she can disappear, I guess. Like, she's got all this work to do, and he's left wondering if they're even still dating. And Elena says, well, thanks for asking if we're still together before boning my best friend. And Blair explains that they never slept together. But Elena replies, well, you should, because that way I know... You're sleeping with a bitch, and she's left unsatisfied. Damn. <laughs> Mic drop. Just <laughs> perfect. I want that to be my away message. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah. I don't know. What do we think of what do we think of Blair's explanation there? That was cheap. That was not sufficient. That was he can do better than yes. that. I mean, he's a smooth talker. <laughs> so I don't know why that was the only thing he could come up with. That was insufficient. Or, like, own up to it. Be like, look, I made a mistake. I don't care about, yeah. like, I care about you. I don't have those feelings. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, you're the reason. Right. Yeah. Yeah, blaming her, basically. Like, it's your fault I cheated on you. Come on. That's the opposite 
once again, he knew what she was like from the very beginning, that she was focused on her studies and she wasn't into dating that much. But he knew all of that and he's still blaming her for it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's not a surprise. It's not like she switched it up on him like she was really into it and then just kind of fell off. Like she was always mm-hmm. like, I don't have time for this. Get out of here. Yeah, she she stood him up at that Chinese restaurant and yet he still kept pursuing her. So, yeah, she's been up front the mm-hmm. whole time. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Then in Noel's room, Felicity comes in and finds Noel and Todd are laughing together and hanging out. And they like kind of both look up at her at the same time. Uh, Like, what is Todd Mulcahy doing here? And Noel says that he got Photoshop running on his computer. And Todd asks Felicity how the test went. She's like, fine. Noel's like, oh, yeah, how did that test go? She's like, fine, Noel. Like, why didn't you ask me first? You're my boyfriend, right? And Todd just says, like, yeah, I came to pick you up for dinner. She's like, no, let's just meet there. And I was getting some thruple vibes. Like, I feel like if this show was made today, it would have been like, you know, maybe this <laughs> this trio could work. That's an interesting idea. Can I say, Felicity, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> so then she changes in her in her room for dinner and Noel comes back in. She asks him how she looks. He says, beautiful, of course. She's like, oh. No, no, that's bad. And so she changes again. She's like, I want to look below average because, yeah, she doesn't want to dress up for Todd. So Noel then now says that Todd's a good guy and is like, got to give him credit for trying, right? Like A for effort. And he says that now he thinks it's nice of Felicity to go out with him because most people would just blow him off and be cruel. And he's like, you know, I probably wouldn't be saying this if I weren't so confident in our relationship. And I'm like, okay, Noel, like you were freaking out before. Like, who is this guy? You need to leave. Leave her alone. Blah, blah, blah. So somehow Todd has charmed yet another person uh, being on his side. And Felicity's like, look, I just want Todd to go home. And then Julie knocks on the door, comes in, asks if Elena's called. Felicity says no. She's like, oh, well, Blair showed up at Dina DeLuca, which is Ben's new place of employment. So just didn't know if you'd heard from her. And Noel asks Felicity, wait, Ben's working at Dina DeLuca? Felicity says, yeah, it was Todd's idea. And I was like, I hate that guy. So, so I love that. <laughs> and that was funny because when it's about yep. Ben, now he's pissed. <laughs> oh so then Julie says that she left Dina DeLuca before Elena had the chance to hit Blair again. So she just doesn't know what's going on. And she's like, where are you going? Felicity says, oh, I'm off to meet my friend Todd for dinner. And Julie's like, oh, I like Todd. He came over and cooked chicken for her and Ben. And then they rented the movie Seven. (laughs) And yet again, now everyone knows Todd. And she says that Todd thinks that Julie should send Carol the tape. Felicity's like, wait, why are you listening to this guy that you just met? And Julie's like, well, he seems like a cool guy. And Noel says, yeah, well, you're not his target. So... He asks Felicity before she leaves to confirm, like, you're not going to fall for this guy, right? And she says no. So, yeah, I think this is also why I'm annoyed because we have been harder on Felicity. Like, yeah, this is nuts Mm -hmm. behavior. She shouldn't be doing this. I think it's weird and interesting, I guess, that everyone is now on Todd's side when, like, literally everyone before thought Felicity was a crazy person for doing similar stuff. So I think maybe that's why I get so annoyed, too. It's like, yeah, we know that Felicity's behavior is crazy, but now they're all supporting this guy, like, when they should be supporting their friend in feeling like, I just want this guy gone. And now they're all like, yeah, you should kiss him, whatever. So I think that maybe that's why I get annoyed. That's just part of the shtick of the episode. I think there's some some critical differences, though. (laughs) I know. Besides that, I mean, because, like, for Julie to be like, oh, yeah, he seems like a nice guy. He's not being introduced as Felicity Stalker. He's being introduced as an old friend of her boyfriend. So that's a different dynamic that she's going to have with him right off the bat. Like, oh, you two used to skateboard together. Tell me stories about when you and Ben used to hang out together. What was he like when he was younger? Like, there could be a lot of conversation in there and she could get to know him for him and not as, oh, this guy has been bothering my friend Felicity. He's such a creep. It's I think there's very different dynamics. And that's why people are relating to him differently, because he is different. He is not the exact carbon copy of Felicity. For yeah, for Julie, for Julie, for sure. But like for Ben, who's been stalked by Felicity, I'll be like, oh, yeah, you should just kiss him. He's a good guy, whatever. And now Noel's like, because he knows him. That's his old friend. He's not just some random guy like they know him. Like he's not some like guy that just creeped up out of nowhere. Yeah, but Ben also knows Felicity and they are friends now, too. They've never went skateboarding together. Come on, Heather. Come on. 
Yeah, but he didn't even know Todd's last name. Yeah, because, like, you hang out when you're kids. Like, you don't, like, call them, like, hello, Mr. McKay. He's like, hey, what's up, Todd? Like, kids don't do not do that. Like, they hang out at a skate park. They're not going to exchange background information. They're just going to hang out. Right. Which is why I think their relationship is less deep than Ben and Felicity even. But And then Noel is like, oh, yeah, you should. I'm glad you're having dinner with him. This is great. Like, it's just everyone is changing their opinions and no one is, like, supporting Felicity's desire to not. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Also, Ben forgot Felicity's first name. <laughs> so he at least knew who Todd was. Remember when she showed up and it was the picture date and he's like, uh, 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 and she had to say Felicity. That's how much he didn't know Felicity. He obviously. Back then, 100%. Yeah, but he knew Todd way more. He had, like, lots of interactions with Todd compared to, like, oh, this girl held my blood. But I didn't even remember who that was. Like, he probably didn't even remember that moment, but she was fixated on it. I think there's a lot of differences. I think he's way over the top and he's, like, wildly inappropriate, too. But I can understand why people are relating to him differently than they related to Felicity when she was up to her similar antics. Okay. Here's the point where you say agree to disagree and then (laughs) move on. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, no, that's true. I just still, yeah, it's, they're her friends now. And I I would have thought that they'd be more on her side or supporting her. That's all. And that's why I get annoyed. She doesn't seem, I think, if she was more distressed, like if she was Mm -hmm. crying and stuff and she was like really disturbed. Right now, she just seems kind of annoyed. And like, that doesn't seem as like a serious level or like, oh my God, girl, do you need anything? Like, I'm here for you if you need to talk about it. It doesn't seem that serious the way she's behaving. Like, it just seems like she's just kind of annoyed. Like she gets annoyed about other things. Okay. I know. I know. It's okay. Let's go. Keep going. (laughs) (laughs) So Felicity does meet Todd for dinner. He tells her, thanks for sitting down with me. And he explains that running into Felicity at the Safeway back in Palo Alto, he doesn't think it was a coincidence. Like he had gone there earlier in the day and for Thanksgiving and forgotten or Christmas and forgot to buy the turkey. Like who forgets to buy the turkey at Christmas? And so then he went back and that's where he ran into her and she was worried about her grades and said that, oh, nothing's changed. Like she's still a nerd, still worried about her grades. And he thinks that like there was this almost kiss moment when they were kids when all he had to do was lean in and things would have been different. Right. And so Felicity says that that was a long time ago. But he hasn't forgotten about that moment. And he asks her, like, why do you think you have it? Like, you haven't forgotten that moment either. And she says, sure, at the time, at that time, it was a big deal. And he's like, yeah, because they represented something to each other. They were an alternative, that there were expectations. And yet they always encouraged each other to do what they wanted to do. He said, like, he gave her some art supplies and she used to draw. So he's like, yeah, I used to doodle. He was like, no, like you were really serious about it. It's what you wanted to do. And so he's kind of, I don't know, he's making their relationship into this whole thing about like she's not doing all the things in her life that she wanted to do when she was 12. And he's a part of that, I guess, because she's not kissing him. I think he's genuinely (laughs) concerned about her future and her her present and her future. I think he's really worried about her. I'm kidding. I'm kidding a little bit, but kind of, yeah. (laughs) 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 <laughs> yes, that that moment in Safeway, he's now very concerned. So Felicity was like, look, like, say everything you want. I don't really care. Like, I'm not interested. Thank you. But stop calling me and sending me things. OK, take care. She grabs her coat. She starts to leave. Todd chases after her outside. Again, like this part is exhausting mm-hmm. to me. He then continues to say, like, uh, if I had kissed you, like it would have meant something. But I chickened out and It's like, I'm doing what most people never do. I'm trying to reopen the window. And she's like, you're nuts. And he's like, look, like, we'll just know in a second if we kiss. Like, if there's electricity, then we can run off together and do whatever we want to do. And she says, well, how do you know I'm not doing what I want to do already? It's like, goodbye, Todd. Mm -hmm. So Todd's like, okay, fine. I may have lost this battle, but we will kiss. (laughs) And I might be down, but I'm not in any way out And as he's kind of walking backwards, stepping into the road, he pulls a Regina George and gets hit by a bus. Mm -mm. And then we get to be continued. (laughs) That's the end of that episode. That was pretty. That was really awful. That was not a cool thing to see. I didn't mean that. (laughs) (laughs) They really showed you a lot. And I I do remember... 
back back when I first yeah. saw the episode ever, it, I do remember being like <laughs> shocked that that happened. <laughs> That's some big time shock value. <laughs> you no, know, I just laugh. What happened? Yeah. yeah, terrible. <laughs> and so yeah, I mean, I get the point of Todd Mulcahy that like he represents her hopes and her dreams for when she was <laughs> a kid, and he's kind of there to remind her of her other passions outside of medicine and what her parents have wanted for her. And how we like lose sight of some of those things as we get older. But yeah, overall, it's just the constant like, no, we have to kiss. No, we have to kiss. No, we have to kiss. Like it just it's exhausting. And at first, it's funny that like she's getting back a little taste of her own medicine. (laughs) Same stuff. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, Yeah. taste of her own medicine. Like it's biting her in the ass now. It's funny at first, but then it just it starts to get a little annoying to me. But I will reserve my final judgment until after part two. But this is my least favorite mm-hmm. episode so far. It feels like a bit That's of a fair. mid-season slump to me. But maybe I, do, you all I definitely don't feel as strongly about it as you do. <laughs> but I, it's not. <laughs> it's true. I just I always I always skip these. Episodes I think I, I feel like I do too. But when I watched it again this time, I was like, no, this is very funny. Like Melissa was saying, there's a lot of really good humor in it, mm-hmm. and and I don't think it wasn't just about like hopes and dreams. It's kind of like that. Um, like sliding doors like what if you said yes instead of saying no like what if you went left instead of going right like do you like that question mark like what if I had made this one decision a long time ago what would my life look like now like that kind of parallel universe like like that's what I kind of take away from it more than just not necessarily that just like how different can our life be just based on one decision here and there you know I think about that stuff all the time that is a great movie, oh I was though. just gonna say <laughs> I love that movie it's fantastic perfection mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 yeah, I think that's why I'm a little bit like, hey, with this. Also, I have a book recommendation for viewers <laughs> just because there's so many red flags here. It's called The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker, and it's the subtitle of that. It's The Gift of Fear, Survival Signals That Protect Us from Violence. There's lots of examples. There is some trigger warning content stuff, like some yuck that is described in the book. So just a heads up there. But it's really good examples um, from his career of teaching people how to trust their instinct and not shut off that little voice that is trying to get their attention and talk to them. Like, listen to that. You are right. Like, don't get in that elevator if you don't feel comfortable getting in that elevator. Like, don't keep interacting with people that you don't feel comfortable around. So it's a really good book. I did not finish it yet, but what I read so far, it was spectacular. So highly recommend that book. And I recommended it to patients as well. Is it all about relationships or it's more just bigger than that? And it can be bigger, yeah. Like there's um one part where um somebody was trying to start a business with this couple who owned their own business. He had a business idea for them and he wanted to collaborate them and he wouldn't drop it. Or like somebody that stalking a radio personality wanted to interact with that person. So it's not like all about romantic relationships. It's just like any relationships that we can get into, any interactions we have with people. How do we keep ourselves safe by listening to our gut and setting hard boundaries and sticking with those boundaries and not falling for the traps that these people set that make us turn down the volume on that little voice that's saying like, this isn't right. That's my little serious tidbit for this because there are very problematic behaviors from him. And I still think he's a funny character, like just because of this is a fictional thing and it's not like he's not a bad guy but just in real life please watch out because there are some not nice people out there for sure yeah i um definitely love i love the humor from the episode but i wonder how it would feel if instead of todd being the way he was he was just like this serious character from like a a former boyfriend of felicity's who's visiting new york and wants to talk to her and like Throughout the episode, they kind of like show how her art passion was left behind and like he kind of brings it out in her again in a serious way instead of this like, you know, stalker doofus like interacting with all her friends and causing chaos. Like, I wonder how much that the artistic side when when she thinks about that more like how trying to explain it, like how more impactful, impactful that yeah. would have been if it, if it had come from a serious person. instead, A of less hokey kind of presentation. Taught. Yeah. 100% agree. Yeah, that's I I think that's my main issue with the episode too. It's like it's funny, but I think they could have done it a different way that would have been more mm-hmm. effective or impactful. But we'll see. Again, there's a part 2 to this. Maybe I will change my mind after next <laughs> week. So, we've got to see what happens to Todd Mulcahy after the bus hits him. Hey counter this week. We had 17. So, lots of haze obviously. Todd Mulcahy is meeting all kinds of people. He's got a hey, everyone. So no surprises there. But thanks, everyone, for joining. Let us know what you think about the episode. Maybe we're wrong and there's something we're missing here. 
Maybe I'm wrong, I should say. I was going to say, Melissa and I picked on so many gems. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I can admit it when I'm wrong. Again, not a terrible episode, just not my favorite. My least favorite, for sure. Uh, but <laughs> still, it's Felicity, so it's amazing. But join us in Discord. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, anywhere you get social media. Shoot us an email. Let us know your thoughts. We will see you again next week. Bye. Bye. Felicity Was Here is produced, written, and edited by Heather, Melissa, and Dr. Joe. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Felicity Was Here Pod. If you're enjoying the pod, please leave us a review and help us spread the word. We appreciate you and would love to hear from Felicity super fans like us. So send us your feedback, ask us your burning questions, or just say hey at felicitywashearepod at gmail.com. We may even read your note in a future episode. Talk to you all next week.